It's not working, is it? <laughs> I made creepy robots from the 90s movie Toy Story. If you're not familiar with the movie, there's this character named Sid, who's a young inventor that likes to create his own toys. And in this video, I am going to recreate actual functioning robotic replicas of my two favorite. Babyface, also known as Spider Baby, and Hand in the Box. And if all works out well, we'll put them to the test head to head against each other in races and battles of attrition to see who the best robot actually is. For Spider Baby, I obviously have to be able to remotely control the robot, but I also want to be able to see what Spider Baby sees through the missing eye and the doll head. And to start things off, I actually cheated a little by going with a hexapod robot kit because that just made things way easier. And the head to the baby doll itself was 3D printed, which is the creepiest thing I've ever 3D printed on my printer by far. Then I added a wireless camera inside the head behind the region where the eye was missing on the original Spider Baby. And I could see exactly what it sees through these VR goggles. That's not weird at all, right? Since I cheated with the kit, that part was pretty seamless, but it did require installing like 200 of these obnoxious tiny little screws and 18 total servos, so wiring was a total bird's nest. I also had these two playing around me the entire time, which was massively distracting. After slapping it all together though, I was really pleasantly surprised with how this thing operated and I was really happy to see that I could do some of the movements like raising and lowering and tilting that Spider Baby does in the movie. I did modify the kit a little though to accept a more common battery because it requires these obscure batteries that are really expensive and hard to source, but that didn't really have any negative impact because it also allowed me to split the power off to the camera that's gonna go inside the head. And while all that's happening, the baby head's printing in the printer in the other room. And to make it even weirder, I had to drill a, a hole out where the eye is missing in the movie for authenticity's sake and to fit the camera. Then it was time to pretty it up a little bit. And I had to add some fancy brackets to hold everything in place. And of course, before testing, I had to add in the claws just to get closer to the real thing. He's getting you! Everyone was absolutely thrilled with how well it all worked together because we weren't sure if it was all going to mesh, which meant it was time to move on to hand in the box. And this time there is no kit, which is probably obvious by the sake that I've never seen anything like this on the market. So I had to pretend engineer one. And it just had to be good enough to roughly compete with Spider Baby and be simple enough for my son to drive so he could have some fun, which meant there really weren't that many other requirements. The base started out as a regular Jack in the Box and then I had to remove the Jack, at least, at least I think that's his name. And the hand is 3D printed as well, which is the second weirdest thing I've ever 3D printed. So uh, top two in one video. And I planned for it to do some reciprocating motion with a slider crank mechanism. Now you may have seen almost the same mechanism in my robotic Nerf tank video, but it was actually originally designed for this project. And that's because it has this nonlinear velocity profile that I'm hoping makes it look more realistic. You know, realistic is kind of a weird word to use here. Maybe that's not the right word. I want it to look more like actual motion from the movie and not this just straight linear back and forth motion that looks like some sort of cartoon robot. And with a little luck, we can just kind of slap all this together and hopefully it'll work so we can get to testing. But 
but as you might have expected, it's not gonna get any grip. It's a bunch of slippery plastic and metal. So it just kind of flops around on the table doing nothing productive at all. And that's where these come into play. These are one-way bearings, which mean they can only rotate in one direction. My hope is that they would allow it to push forward, but not pull backwards so that it's inchworming along through the use of the one-way bearings. And after getting everything in place, let's go do some more testing. Perfect. Is that a good design? <laughs> you trying to scratch my head? You're gonna cut my hair? <laughs> my first few tests were garbage. Nothing worked because I had screwed up the weight distribution because I wasn't thinking. I didn't think about the fact that there was no traction on the hand because I had a three point mount on the back. So after I removed the forward mount and repositioned everything, I got enough weight on the hand to actually pull itself forward and inchworm along. It worked wonderfully well after this, but I'm still limited to straight lines. And so that's where one more continuous servo comes into play. And this servo is meant to kind of move me along left and right like a cam, so that when it's up, I can still drag along, but when I'm turning, it's shifting the base left or right. And I'm also controlling all this, by the way, with some scavenged Traxxas electronics, which is really fitting that I cannibalized another vehicle for this one, which is exactly what Sid does in the movie. He destroys other perfectly good toys to make his own inventions. Uh, anyways, with a little bit of luck, we should be able to steer now. And now that everything's working well, let's put them to the test in a head-to-head -head drag race. And we could see that Spider Baby was easily faster, even with my son kind of driving all over the place. The steering on the hand in the box also turned out to be unreliable garbage, as I could never correct because for some reason it just decided to stop getting grip. But on a good note, the goggles did make a difference driving around Spider Baby. It did make it a much more immersive and fun experience for anyone that tried them on. Up next, we have a wrestling match. We're gonna see if Spider Baby has what it takes to take on hand in the box in some hand to hand combat, pun intended. And this was pretty much another blowout for Spider Baby, which is starting to look like maybe because one kit is very well engineered and one of them is pretengineered with a bunch of scavenged components. You know, that may be the real reason as to what's going on here. And if I had to pick a favorite, it's definitely Spider Baby. There's way more motion control, all sorts of different modes. It was quicker, it was more creative, and it was way more immersive with these FPV goggles. The kit did come with a remote that allowed you to wirelessly control it, and it was actually intuitive enough that my five-year-old could pick out almost all the functions without me ever training him. There was also an app and you can control it with a computer, but I do think the remote made it a much more interesting experience. It didn't require any programming, which for a simple-minded mechanical engineer like me is a big deal because I hate programming and I really can't do it anyways. It'll definitely be a blast when Halloween comes around too, which is just a couple weeks away. So here's the hoping that we can have some fun with some trick-or-treaters. And surprisingly for me, my son actually liked the hand in the box more. I'm not sure if it was just because it was the same remote that he's used to using with his other RC cars or if he just felt sorry for me. It could be either or. I'm gonna leave that one hanging to you, but he had a blast with it. It was really intuitive to control as well because like I said, it's just an RC car remote. And with just two controls, there's really no learning curve. And overall, I thought this was a really fun, really cool project. Hopefully you liked it as much as we do. And if you do, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave it below and I'll do my best to try and respond. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. 
And I look forward to sharing my next project with all of you, which should be uh, maybe another month from now.